What is up guys? This is Jay here, Jay Media One, and today is an exciting day. And why you may ask? Well that is because we got our hands on the brand new iPad Mini. This is the brand new redesigned iPad Mini that is released for 2021. And we're gonna do an unboxing today because we've never even opened this thing yet. So we're gonna check it out, go over some tech specs, turn it on, show you guys what it's capable of. So here we go. You see the iPad mini comes with the classic strip on top. So we're able to take that strip and just peel it back. And then we can continue around the side. And in theory, it's supposed to go all the way around there. So peel this off. Get rid of the plastic. And now, you just let this drop down, take the top off. Get rid of that. And there it is. There's the mini. Now, this is completely redesigned. There's no home button on this anymore. We're going to peel this off. And make it real nice to slide out there. going to flip it over and set it here and inside we have the classic Apple reading material of course little guide here on how to how everything operates and we do have our stickers and the stickers are in white looks like pure white which is okay with us we like the white so we're gonna set that aside you have a USB-C charger this time, and the reason for that is, is because Apple decided to put USB-C on this device, which I think is really cool. Uh, USB-C is going to be the wave of the future, so it makes sense. I don't know why they haven't upgraded the iPhone yet with this. Um, mainly they're saying because it's going to save the environment and save money, um, but USB-C is a great option. My Mac already has USB-C. My iPad already has USB-C, my iPad Pro, so this is a great option. And then we have the classic charger, nothing too fancy here. And I believe this is a 20 watt, yes, so this is a 20 watt charger. You're not going to get super high speed out of this charger, but it's good enough. So we're going to set that aside for now, nothing else in the box. And here we are, here's the iPad, the completely new redesigned smaller bezel around the outside here. Um, you can see the smaller bezel around the outside, which is nice. The USB-C slot is at the bottom now, so it is directly underneath. And then you have the two speaker ports here, but the cool part about the inclusion of this one is we also have the two speaker ports at the top. So technically we have the surround speakers that we do on the iPad Pro now. So that's great. Uh, we have the power button at the top. There is no home button now, so your Touch ID sensor is built into this power button, which is pretty cool. We have our volume rockers here, and then there is literally nothing else. If you get the LTE option, you'll have the, the uh, antenna on the side as well, and then you have support for this one supports the Apple Pencil, which is really cool. So that's what that slot is here. And then we just have the classic uh, iPad logo on it. This has a, a redesigned camera, little camera bump here, and a flash underneath. And this is the model A2567 iPad. So we're just going to click the button here. It should turn on. We get the Apple logo. And it's getting ready to start up. Now, classically, um, Apple makes it super easy to transfer over your settings from another device. Um, and there's the hello as it's loading up there. Uh, they make it super easy for that. However, I like to set up my iPads as brand new devices. So we're going to swipe up. We're going to select English as a language. And we can use uh, United States. And there it is, there's the quick start. So if you bring your iPad near, um, I have my iPad over there and it's already asking me if I want to set up this new iPad with that. But I'm going to click on set up manually for this instance. And then we just have to connect over to our Wi-Fi. Or we can connect to a Mac or PC. So 
So we're able to do that. So we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi here. And as you guys can see, the Wi-Fi is now connected. It is hooked up. It is ready to go. So we just hit next. And then it takes a few minutes to activate the iPad. If you are transferring your settings, it is super easy. It's one cool thing that Apple does. But what I want to talk about is the aesthetics of this thing because it's super clean. It's got this matte finish on the back here, which is super, super clean and nice. Um, it also has a great you know, feel for your hands. I have pretty large hands, but even for somebody with small hands, you're going to have no problem gripping it like this and holding it um, in the place. So that's pretty cool. It also has this nice uh, finish on the top, which I really like. The buttons don't protrude too much out of here. They kind of sit pretty flat, so that's super nice. And they also have this you know, nice smooth finish here. The, everything is just super sleek and smooth, and it's got the rounded corners here, and everything's just super, super nice. Okay guys, we are back and we just finished the setup portion of the process. Other than the Touch ID, now it's asking us to set up the Touch ID. So you use your fingerprint in place of a passcode, but you do this now on top of the power button here. So we're just going to hit that, we're going to tap it around until it recognizes every part of our finger. And in this case I'm using my index finger. Typically you would use your thumb, but just the location of it makes it a little bit easier to use your index finger. So now it's going to ask for the outside portions, so we're going to put that in there. And you kind of just move your finger around until it gets everything. And then you can add another one if you want. Uh, we're not going to do that. Rotate the iPad and roll an additional fingerprint to easily unlock it with the other hand it's saying. So if you had it in this direction, or maybe this direction you can do it. So we're gonna just we'll just do it. So we're gonna set it up with our left hand as well. And you just gotta keep tapping until it collects your entire fingerprint here. It's got it all. Now it says do the edges. So we're gonna do the edges. And we're good. So now we can continue. Uh, we're not gonna transfer. I'm going to type in my Apple ID here. Now it's going to say the verification code's been sent. Luckily I have my iPad over here, so I'm just going to hit that. It gives me a code. I'm going to type that in. And it's verifying everything here. And now it's going to continue into setup mode from this point. We have to agree to some terms and conditions. You don't really have a choice in that matter. So we're just going to say OK. And while it's setting this up, we can talk about the Apple Pencil. So I do have an Apple Pencil. And the cool part about the Apple Pencil is that it is compatible. It just sticks right here to the side. So it's magnetic just like you would on a regular um, full-size iPad. This pencil almost takes up the entire iPad on this. I mean, there's a little bit of room at the top and a little bit of room at the bottom, but for the most part, it takes up almost the entire iPad. But that's cool. It feels comfortable there. I mean, even if you're holding it like this, it, of course, if you hit it hard enough, you're going to knock it off, but it stays on there pretty good. I can smack it a little bit. It's not really going to go anywhere. Um, the other cool thing about this um, iPad size is it's just big enough for a good size viewing area, but at the same, or taking notes, it would be really, really great for like a, a college student or even a business person taking notes. Um, the greatest part about it, I think, is that it, it can fit into your pocket. Um, if I stand up here, turn around, I have some pretty decent sized back pockets, but it, it can slide right in there. And so I don't entirely recommend doing that because it could cause the screen to crack or it can cause it to bend or something like that but as long as you're standing up it's all right so now we're back at the loading screen so the touch id to open it and it just goes right back into the uh, setup so it's still back in the setup if you pause this it will go back to the uh, to the where it asks you for your touch id as well 
So we're going to give this a few minutes to set up Apple ID, and then we will be back. Okay, guys, I finished setting up Apple ID at this point. It's saying, make this your new iPad. So you can do the apps and data where you don't transfer, or you can do your settings where you set up Siri and your appearance and things like that. Um, so we're just going to hit continue here. Move on to the next screen. Okay, now it's asking if we want to improve Siri and dictation. I just do not now. And now we're at the welcome to the iPad screen so we can click on get started. And you see that all of your apps and even your widgets are here, which is really cool. Um, everything kind of looks exactly like the, uh, the iPad Pro that I have. There's not much difference. If we turn it to landscape mode, you got your widgets up top, which is really cool. Um, everything looks really nice. Um, like I said, one of my favorite features is to be able to to swipe to take screenshots of this. So if we go into maybe notes or something like that, and it talks about all the the new things that are in notes, uh, what you can do in notes and things like that. So we're just going to make a, a new note. And sometimes you have to get the Apple Connect uh, Apple Pencil on there, and it'll say welcome, and then that's what connects it. So it's talking about Scribble. Uh, you can write some words in a box and then it'll translate it over to text. Uh, basically talks about the double tap feature, which is if you double tap on the pencil, it switches from eraser to pencil, depending on what you're doing. Um, and lets you sketch things out, things like that. So there's different cool options here. You can select different types of pencils and things like that. But when you touch your pencil on there, it connects. And you can see my Apple Pencil isn't quite fully charged right now so it's saying uh, that it's charging it so it does charge your pencil while it's on there and that's super cool virtually everything like the other iPad but I like I say it's the form factor it's the portability of this that makes it super awesome because you can carry it with you to take notes it's really easy to fit in your hand like I said I have a pretty big hand but I think even if you had you know, a, a medium size to even a small hand, you would be able to grip it like this. You can grip it like this, you can take your notes without any problems, and then stick your pencil back on there when you're not using it, lay it down. I don't even honestly think that I would use a case with this because it's just that cool. It just looks that good. And um, you could get a little case, you can get a little bifold case that flips over top of it, um, things like that. You, the other cool part about Apple is the ecosystem, and so the ecosystem allows us to share data across all of our devices. So if you have a Mac, you have an iPad, you have an iPhone, and you're doing something on your iPhone, everything can transfer over here very easily. All your photos are saved in the cloud, super easy to gain access to everything. So I think this thing is super cool, and I'm definitely going to be um, using this as a daily driver. Um, some benefactors over the old one, not having the home screen here, the bezels, like I said, are super small. You do have the front facing camera and the rear facing camera. If we click on the camera, you can see that the, the front facing camera is okay. Rear facing camera is pretty nice as well. I mean, everything looks pretty clear on it. It's super, super nice. We get something in there that maybe you can read or look at. Take a snapshot. You got your photo there. And of course, that's a good looking photo. I mean, it's it doesn't take bad pictures whatsoever. Most of the time when you're taking photos with an iPad, you're taking scanned document photos. So you're going into notes, for example, which gives you that kind of option. And then inside of notes, you can create a new note and then you can scan a document directly in here. So if you click on the camera button, you go to scan documents, put your document in the view, take a snapshot and you got a scan document. So that's what I would use this for the most, is to scan documents. The front-facing camera, maybe if you want to do some FaceTime calls, it's cool like that. Honestly, this thing has Wi-Fi and LTE capabilities, so there isn't much keeping you from using it as an actual phone if you really, really wanted to. Um, I just like the size of it. I think it's the perfect size. I think that it has great bezels. It looks really nice. It's super lightweight. Very, very easy to carry around with you. And uh, definitely, definitely for the price tag of this thing, I think it's worth getting. So we're going to go over some tech specs, talk about those, and then you guys can decide if this is something that you want to purchase. Okay guys, so we're back and the tech specs, 
tech specs on this are pretty cool. So it's got an all new screen design, we've seen that. It's got the A15 Bionic chip. It does have 5G if you decide for the LTE option slash 5G option. Um, Apple Pencil, you saw that. It comes in four different colors. We have the silver here. Um, the screen is just great. It's all the way around. It's got 8.3 inch liquid retina display. It has true tone, wide color, ultra low reflectivity, and it text looks good. Colors look good no matter what. And that's very true. Uh, the Apple Pencil attaching to it magnetically to the side is great. Um, like I said, I think the best part about that would be just taking notes. Um, it does have the new stereo speakers, which are on both sides now. And the Touch ID being integrated at the top is super, super cool. Um, the, iPad, the iPad mini is pretty, pretty powerful. The A15 Bionic chip is the same chip that they're putting in the iPhone 13. So this has that same chip. And uh, it's pretty powerful. I believe that you will be able to run Photoshop on here uh, pretty decently without any kind of problems. It's supposed to have a 40% faster CPU. And it has the Apple Neuro Engine, which has two times faster machine learning on it. It does have a 6-core uh, CPU, 80% uh, faster graphics, um, so it has that realistic, uh, you know, experience to it. It does have AR. Uh, it has a 5-core GPU, which is up to 80% 80 80 faster on the graphics side, and it has an all-day battery life. So you shouldn't have any problems with that. We might even just do a video on um, battery. How long this thing will last without shutting down. Um, if you have the 5G, you can take this on the road with you without a problem. Of course, you can always connect it to a wireless hotspot as well. Wi-Fi is pretty much everywhere. It has Wi-Fi 6 built in, which we know is the fastest Wi-Fi right now, basically, that you can get a hold of. Uh, the USB-C charger, super awesome. Uh, it does have the ultra widescreen camera, just like uh, just like the iPhone, which is cool. It's got a 12 megapixel uh, front camera, and it also has center stage. And as most of you already know, center stage gives you the capability to uh, record a FaceTime video. And when you're doing FaceTime, if somebody else enters the screen, it will automatically widen the view of the video so that that other person can be seen. It will also kind of follow you as you move back and forth in the display. Um, the wide camera on the back is 12 megapixels. It has focus pixels and a large aperture so it can carry, you know, capture some really, really nice uh, pictures. Uh, True tone flash as well. Um, so easy to scan documents. And like I said, that's the number one thing that I would do with this thing is scan documents. I mean, it's also nice if you're spontaneously just needing to take a photo as well. Um, second generation Apple Pencil. This does not work with the first generation Apple Pencil, which is a good thing. The first generation Apple Pencil, in my opinion, was total trash. The second generation solved 90% of the problems. Um, the double tap on the side, magnetically being able to charge instead of pulling a cap off of there and having to charge that way is, is a huge deal. Um, also, uh, it does have the folio, which I was uh, kind of explaining a little bit. It's pretty much that fold-over cover that magnetically will shut the iPad down. They had the same thing with the regular iPads, um, so that's pretty fair. The apps should be about the same across the board as the regular iPad, uh, and that's great. So we, al we also have all the uh, accessories and everything that will work with this um, as well. And so the iPad mini starts at $499, and that is for, you know, the, the very basic specifications on the iPad mini. You can upgrade it. You can upgrade the, the storage space. I don't highly recommend that, and the reason why is because you have alternate options for storage. You can plug in a flash drive. Uh, of course, you'd have to have a dongle unless you have a flash drive that's USB-C, but you have that option. And then you also have the iCloud. So as long as you have decent internet, uh, that shouldn't even be a problem whatsoever. So the iPad's got, this iPad's got everything that, that most people would want. 
Um, it comes in space gray, pink, purple, and starlight. Starlight's more of the wider color. Uh, the purple looks pretty good. It's kind of an off purple, and then it comes in the pink. Uh, pink is kind of like a dull pink. It's not super bright or in your face or anything like that. And then space gray. And this is this is the starlight model that we opted for. Capacity 64 gigs or 265 gigs. This thing only weighs uh, just over a half a pound. So 0. 0.65 pounds or 293 grams, which is super, super light. Five inches across, 7.69 inches um, lengthwise, and it has a quarter inch thickness to it. So this thing is only um, one quarter of an inch thick. It's super, super thin. If you were to even put it up to my fingers here, uh, or lay it down flat, you can see see just how super, super thin this thing is. Um, you have the stereo speakers. We can test those out and see what those those sound like as well. And that's about it, guys. I mean, this thing is just packed. It's loaded. It's got everything that you can possibly need. And I know a lot of people would just say, "Well, this is just a uh, this is just a bigger iPhone," but it's really different than that because. I think a lot of people that even have an iPhone, if you know the battery's going dead or something, you want that alternate device. You also have the option to do um, just some pretty cool things with this as well. You know, it's running iPad OS. It's not running iOS. It's not running this the same operating system. So there are are some different features. Maybe we'll go over in a separate video. But overall, my thoughts on it: awesome. I will definitely use this thing every single day. There is no doubt about it. It is just super sleek, it's slim, it's comfortable, it doesn't feel pliable whatsoever. I mean, I can try to try to flex it or bend it, and it's not really wanting to, to flex or bend at all. And that was a problem with the first generation of the iPad Pros. But I don't think we're going to have that problem whatsoever with this one. Um, like I said, you stick it in your back pocket and you sit down, maybe. But I know a lot of people do that with their, their iPhones and they never have a problem whatsoever. So this thing is super cool, and maybe we'll do a couple other videos about the, the software, what it's capable of, and things like that. But definitely worth the look, guys. Awesome, awesome device. That's it. If you like this video, like it. Please subscribe. It helps me to make new content for you guys every single day. Later, guys. Yeah.